Hey there, Tricia from East Marsh Acres here. Um, we graciously have been given, or that we are able to pick our neighbor's cherry tree. So we have cherries that, um, yeah, need to be processed. So I'm going to make some strawberry cherry jam because uh, we just picked strawberries this week as well and yesterday I processed those so I basically just hauled them and squished them up and ready to go for jam. So we'll do the jam process a little bit later but right now I'm just um, this is the first time I've done it and what I've read I'm using a steel straw here to um, pit the cherries. So take a cherry, put it in the end and then push the pit through. And sometimes the, the pit will stay in the uh, in the cherry. I mean in the straw. And I'm also taking off any bad parts or because the birds have been at these. So some of them are like when Roland picked them were already um, that the pits came out when he picked it. So, but you see how it sticks right on top of the, the uh, thing, so you can just take it off. Or if it goes down, it'll go into the bowl here, and eventually we'll have a bowl full of pits. So, kind of a labor-intensive process. I know you can get cherry pitters, but you still have to put it in, push it down, whatever. So it's kind of the same same deal. And these are sour sour These are sour cherries, cherries too. Like you know the your bing cherries or anything. So. But the birds definitely are at the tree. I had some that were sitting in the tree while I was picking. <laughs> Didn't stay very long because they get pretty skittish. So I've never really done anything with cherries before, so I've just looked up recipes then that I can use. And so there is recipes that you do cherries and strawberries. I figured that cherry, the sour cherries, would work well with strawberry jam because. You make strawberry rhubarb jam, and that's a sour um, fruit, or so it should work. Um, so I've seen a couple, so we'll see how that goes. But I won't bore you with um, seeing me do all these. But well, it just takes time. So, many, many hours, hours later, we have finished pitting the cherries. So this is what we have of the pitted cherries. So, um, I'm not ready to make jam tonight yet, so I'm going to refrigerate it and then do it in the morning. So we'll continue our cherry process processing of the cherries um, tomorrow and uh, the straw did work like that that method of pitting them um, it's just very labor intensive and very messy <laughs> so anyways um, see you tomorrow when I get these cherries done <coughs> This is new to me, a new recipe. Um, so, with the Certo jam thing and Pinterest, I figured out a recipe. So, basically, you do two cups of strawberries, two cups of cherries, 
and then four and a half cups of sugar. So I've got the sugar ready and I'm going to put that in. So first I put the um, first I put the fruit with the serto in it. So um, I'm putting in the Serto, so it's one package, and I'm going to put it on high, medium high, and have it come to a boil. <coughs> on the back burner here, I've got the jar lids um, <coughs> boiling to sterilize them. And then I've got in the dishwasher, um, I've got all the jars in here. I'm keeping them in the dishwasher here so they stay warm. So when we put the warm jam in, then uh, the jars won't break or anything and then they, they stay clean in there. So, um, so in the Serto recipe, it suggests that you use um, some lemon juice, but only if you're use only if you're doing sweet sour sweet cherry jam. And the recipe that I have the mixture in there too does not say to use. Um, the jam. But what I am going to add, and what I do in my jams usually, is I do add a bit of butter. Um, about a teaspoon of butter. And that apparently, much, that apparently helps with, um, uh, so you don't get as much foam in your jam. So it's just starting to boil a bit, but we want it to boil to a, like a, a constant boil. So we're just heating it up now. And this is starting to look really nice. Like the color is really nice. Those cherries didn't look very great going in, but they look great in here. <laughs> so we'll let that boil. So I'm just going to keep the lids um, in the hot water until I need them. And uh, so this should give us about um, four to five cups of jam.
Sunday, and uh, we have blueberries in the morning, we put blueberries on top, or blueberries in the yogurt, and, and then we also have, um, yeah, so I crushed all the strawberries too. If I don't make all the jam, then what I do is I freeze them flat in, in the freezer, and then I can make jam throughout the year um, with, with the frozen strawberries. So it's still not at a rolling boil yet. I might put it up a little bit on temperature. Now, using a cast iron pot um, keeps an even temperature, but it also takes a little bit longer. Um, I'm using an induction stove. So uh, cast iron works really well on an induction stove. So a frying pan and so on.
back. all the cherries on the top floating because when you put them in the jar it's going to do the same thing is uh, float just on the top Takes a little bit of time for the sugar to come up to temperature, <clears throat> but we want to be diligent in our stirring so we're not getting it burning on the bottom. Um, the cast iron helps in this respect because it, again, even heat doesn't heat so fast on the bottom. So this morning, uh, part of my chores were, um, this is the last day for our meat chickens. So I had to go to the processing plant and pick up the crates that we're gonna put them in early tomorrow morning. And in about 45 minutes, I have to remove their food about 15 hours before uh, we bring them the processing plant so that's at two o'clock and uh, so we'll have this jam ready just in time to be able to go out there and do that and looking really good 
smells good. See that it's starting to um, it's starting to um, get hotter because there's foam starting to um, come on the top. stirring it doesn't stop so now I'm going to put the timer on for one minute and keep stirring for one minute and then it should be done and then we got to put them in the jars You always run the risk that when it boils, if you put two, like double the recipe, um, and you put um, that it boils over. So there's my one minute timer. So I'm going to turn it off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bowl. And I'm going to skim the top. I'm going to take off the foam. Now I don't get rid of this foam. We use it on our sandwiches as well. Because there's jam. It's just that it's in foam. Thing. So you just don't want the foam on the top of your jam. Jars. So you stir it for a bit. You usually take the foam off. I, I put, like with a with a stainless steel. Strawberry one, not so much. Um, it's, it's again because I tried to reduce the sugar, so I probably should have added more pectin, but I don't mind it runny because then we put it in um, yogurt and stuff. But now what I do, so now these, 
um, jars sealed themselves and you can feel that there's no um, air underneath like it's sealed. So I'm not going to do this, but the ones that didn't seal, what I do is, so I just put that in a double boiler. I have this little jar and I've got some wax in it. So it's para wax. And so it's a, a sterile wax. And I put it in, and I'm just going to put a, a layer of wax. And you can do that even on the runny, runny stuff. And basically it just gives another um, insurance that the jam will not get any um, mold or anything on it. So then that will just harden in there and then when you want to use it you just take off the wax. That's why I like to have the jars at least up to the um, uh, up to the edge rather than down in here because I don't want the wax to be underneath the lid. It's harder to get the wax out so fill it up as far as you can. So yeah the cherry jam was a success and uh, the strawberry jam not so much but anyways so that's a wrap up of my jam uh, makings this week. Um, the other thing that we did today uh, on another video that Roland posted was our meat chickens. So I've done the, the math of that endeavor and um, basically we started with 32 chicks and we ended up processing 28 of the chicks. Um, our cost, and that's just feed, the purchase and feed, um, came to 5682. So you divide it by 28, it's about $18.10 a bird. Um, but then I didn't take the cost in, so I gave my neighbor, because we used her land, I gave the neighbor three chickens. So that's about $60. I put 54. So it comes to 50, 560, 82 divided by 28. It's about $20.02 per bird. Um, if I take it now as an average of our weight, so when I was, our, our chickens came out to be close to five pounds to almost 10 pounds. So let's just say seven pounds was the average because we didn't have a whole, uh, we had more that were around that weight, seven or eight pounds as opposed to the nine pounds. So I'm going to take an average of seven pounds, uh, which then is $2.86 per pound. So that's pretty good value for your money. Now, of course, that's not taking into consideration any of the labor that I did uh, for those eight weeks, uh, almost nine weeks that we had the chickens. So, um, and it doesn't take into consideration us making the meat, the, the chicken shaw that we sure. used, or chicken tractor that we used. And, uh, but we'll be using that again and again. So that's just a, yeah, um, an expense that the homestead is taking on. So for, uh, for so it's, it's well worth it um, if you don't mind putting the work in and not getting paid for that work kind of thing. Uh, we will be probably, you know, um, selling some of our chickens to our family. And uh, so we'll have to figure out what that's going to be. But um, we can recoup some costs by just uh, selling to our friends and family. So and, and the basic idea is so that we have about one chicken per week for the year. Right. So if we end up with... Uh, so we have 25 chickens left, so that's like one every two weeks, so then we're going to, if we do it again in the fall, we'll have one for every week then, um, if, we, if we sell a few more, like, um, you know, five or six or something like that. 
between oh, you have all to of us. End, end up with 27. Yeah, Do whatever. To 50 but, but I, I um, yeah, so I'm just going to show you. I kept one out because we're going to cook it up on the weekend. So it's in the fridge. So this is how it came out, all bagged up, and it's got the weight on it. So this is this one is a 7.69. So this is like our average, you know, seven to eight pounds um, chicken. So pretty, pretty big. So we're going to uh, do that on the weekend, and maybe we'll film how we <laughs> prepare our chicken. Yeah, um, maybe a few comments about your the the experience. Uh, raising them. I mean, to a large extent, we found that they were pretty sedentary, right? So they would eat themselves into sort of like a like stupor. A stupor, like at Thanksgiving dinners when <laughs> that people do, right? So yeah, they ate and they were very docile. Lethargic. Um, you know, even when we were moving the chicken tractors at the end there, it's like getting them to move, like when we were moving them and not running them over was, was a bit of a chore. And it was very interesting that, so we had to, before you process them, you take away their food about 15 hours before the processing time that you bring them there. And so that they don't have any food in their, their gullet, basically, gizzard. or gizzard. Um, and, uh, and yeah, then they're cleaning themselves out a little bit more before um, the processing time. So <laughs> we found that in the morning when we went there, they were a lot alert, <laughs> a lot more alert and, and walking around and running, you know, kind of uh, around um, since they hadn't eaten for 12 hours, 12, 15 hours. So, um, and the appearance of the birds? Um, the, the birds were not nice to look at. They're like kind of, oh, I left the fridge open. I'll put the chicken back for a minute. If you could see in the video, um, we'll, we'll put a link to that video, um, suggesting it, but yeah, the birds are not pretty to look at. And then they're on the ground and they walk over each other and they poop on each other and they whatever and they've got these big butts with no no um feathers, feathers on them and kind of thing and and their feet are huge like to hold them up they were bred to be able to hold them up because of uh, the weight that they they become or whatever so I think next time, what we did learn is we don't keep them as long, so probably at least a week shorter. So um, don't go over eight weeks. They say eight to ten weeks, but we're not going to go over eight weeks again. Just to it saves a week's worth of feed and and time and effort and um, yeah, we don't need chickens that are that big kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. S S what? Sudden death. Oh yeah. Well, we lost we lost uh, well three to what we call seven, sudden death syndrome. They call it S D S. No idea why they keeled over or whatever. And then one we know that um, it just had a bad leg that it uh, it just gave up on on. It just couldn't stand up, just rolled over and whatever. So we had to euthanize that one. And, uh, but the other ones, yeah. So two earlier on, two later, whatever. So. And then you rescued one. And then I did rescue one. Um, we, I noticed that it wasn't moving around very well and kind of had a gimpy leg and it was using its its wing to kind of get it around and but the other chickens were kind of like not giving it space to get to feed and water they don't care i mean they just roll run over each other and whatever so um and then if i had to move the chicken tractor i had to basically pick move it a bit and pick it up and put it into the new grass and then move the rest 
And so I did that for one day and I thought, no. So we have a, we have a dog crate, an empty dog crate that we've used for many different things now. And uh, so I put the chicken in there and I kept it alive till, till, uh, and eventually it was actually standing, walking around, mm -hmm. recuperated. So it must've just sprained its leg or something like that. And uh, anyways, saved a chicken. <laughs> and what about the, and, uh, the resuscitation of the ground? Yeah, well, the, I don't know if you want to film out I've, there, but I've shown it, but yeah, the neighbor yet let us use part of their um, land, which actually was a big garden before, like 10 years ago. And uh, so she's always just let it grow over. And so it's just got a lot of weeds, pasture, um, wildflowers, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, yeah, it just greened it up really well. So um, I think it was good for that soil um, to be having our chickens on and she has no problem with us using it again in the fall. So um, yeah, it was great to have it just here because our hose on the side of the house, we could, we could bring it out to there to fill up their waters all the time and, and so on. So it's a good experience, I think. Mossies. Yeah, um, yeah, early in the morning, mosquitoes, very bad in there. So when we went out there, um, I'd go out there if it was just a straight pull. If we had to turn the corner, then Roland would come out with me. But we had to, yeah, we had to cover ourselves completely as much as possible from mosquitoes. They were really bad in, in the morning. So, uh, I don't know how much they bothered the chickens, but yeah, anyways, that's, uh, that's part of Ontario summers here. We were going to have coffee out on our deck. We started sitting out there having our coffee and it, we got attacked by mosquitoes. So, well, part you know, of it is also, it's been quite, it's bad. been very humid. We've had a lot of rain. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny listening to other video people that we or people that we follow on on YouTube, and they haven't had rain in, in you know six weeks and whatever, and we've had rain almost every other day, and then the humidity is so high, and uh, so it's very difficult too to now we don't have to be watering our garden and everything, but we are having to go out and the weeds are prolific. So we have to go out and weed, and then we have to we do have to um, uh, water our hoop house where the tomatoes and the peppers are. But they're they're all doing well. So we will probably give you on the weekend. We'll give you a little garden tour and see how things are progressing in our garden. But thanks for joining me on my jam journey and uh, and our meat chicken journey. So till next time, take care. Bye.